Cameroon was in the beginning stages of democracy. Um, a lot of Cameroonians were seeking ways to expand um, their education and to give themselves a better opportunity for positions in either the government or just society. There was a certain level of prestige that came along with being educated and with my parents already completing a certain level of schooling in, in Cameroon and wanting to further their education, um, they found a way to make it to the States in the 70s. And um, being in the States for about 10 years, somewhere in between that period of time, a prince was born. <laughs> and then we um, left when I was about four for the first time back to Africa. My situation is a little bit more complicated in comparison to the average African man who was born on the continent since I was born in the United States, but have lived in Africa for um, 10 years plus. Um, I view myself as a first generation African American, but also recognize that I'm not a descendant of the slaves. So my storyline doesn't start necessarily in um, the United States and my values and cultural um, experiences are not necessarily th that of the African American. Le français est un peu dur, mais je suis venu quand même pour me présenter devant vous et, et Bimster pour euh, vous dire que ah, voilà votre frère Camerounais qui est ici aux États-Unis en train de faire euh, les mouvements euh, musicaux. Central, il y a un des Cameroun. Oui. Oui. washing machine. <laughs> But I have experienced what they've experienced um, to a certain degree when it just comes down to everything that's happening in society and in, you know, our specific communities. I lived on the west side of Chicago for um, a nice period of time. And so I wasn't viewed as anything else but a black man because that's the complexion of my, my skin. So as an African man, I want people to understand that I'm no different than the African-American uh, we're the same people. I adjust my personality, my attitude, my accent everywhere I go, whether it's an African village, a black neighborhood, a European country. Everything's about communication. And if you don't have those skills to be able to communicate with people, then there will always be misunderstandings. If I have to slow down the way I talk, or sound a little bit more hood when I'm in the hood. <laughs> sound a little bit more Caucasian when I'm around white folks. It's not because I'm diminishing anything about myself. I just believe that I'm a people person and I want to be understood. So whatever it takes to be understood, that's what I will use. Those are the skills and the tools that I use to communicate. Because I feel like communication is key. And as long as I don't feel like I'm appropriating or disrespecting anybody in any shape or form, then I'm okay with it. Give your money. We'll eat your money by this weekend. No, I'm going to chop some agents this weekend. And what in your hand? Wow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, I'm not snapping you, no, madam. No, I'm not snapping you. Don't worry. I'm just. I know. Say, I know. I know. Say, master, the wash. I know. Say, master, the village. She. It. It. Master, the village. It wash a story. I understand. Ah, uh, we know they snap you. The way you turn, though. Oh wow. 
That shit is perfect, G. I've had these experiences. I have the right to speak the way I do. So, yeah, it doesn't really bother me to go from Cameroon to the United States and have to code switch. Because it's a necessity that people get my point of view and know what I stand for. Back to my village, set my people free. I never let her, I am a leader. No dabs. I got a queen with me, you got a meter. My strap. I am in charge and I speak from the heart. No dabs. And I keep a goon with me if you want to start. No cap. more African Americans to dive in more into the African culture, not just the music, but you can learn some more about the continent's history. You could pick a specific country, one that you would want to identify with and just find out more information on why they reason the way they do, why they were pressed the way that they were and why there are still corrupted leaders. I think finding out more of this information would further bridge the African and the African-American um, closer to each other. So I just made my way back from Cameroon and um, I was at the airport in Brussels and I ran into this older lady. She was about 65 years old in line and um, I was just asking her, you know, how was her journey and, you know, what are the places that she saw and uh, when she started speaking, I realized she was American and she was like, I just visited the Gambia and I hadn't been there in 22 years. And I now want to return and live there with my family. And I just love how peaceful it is and how accepting the people are of me and my kind. So after checking in, I saw another lady who had a bunch of kids and I asked her about her experience traveling because I saw her at the airport in Cameroon. And she said the same thing um, about wanting to move back to Africa. And she happened to be from Illinois as well. And so it dawned on me that, you know, this is a time where there's just a lot more information being provided for African-Americans to do their research and find out what it would take for them to know more about Africa, the continent of Africa. And um, with that being done is when I feel those doors will be opened for Africans and African-Americans to further understand each other and be able to work side by side. The process has already started. Human beings are always going to have something positive to say and something negative to say. It's just all about if there's a cause that you want particular groups to be a part of, to move forward and gain some type of relevance within society. And that's my viewpoint. I just feel like it's impossible to get a whole group tribe to completely love another group or tribe. You know, it's, it's survival. People are going to have some kickback <laughs> every so often when they don't really fully understand something or want to protect their identity. I'm not really one to try to kumbaya the whole situation, but information is, is important. You know, knowing more about a people and seeing how similar they are to you. Um, when it con comes down to what you're fighting for, I think that's the best way for African-Americans and Africans to join hand in hand to combat oppression. And when that's done, um, a lot more nicer things are going to be said. You know, you say nice things about your friends and you say some sketchy stuff about people that you don't really know. So, hey, I feel like everything boils down to information. Um, and of course, if you don't have all the details or the experiences, then you're going to make poor judgments about people, places or things. 
there are a lot of Africans who might not have left the continent or don't have exposure to a bunch of information who by watching TV or movies could imagine America to be heavenly paved in gold, the land of opportunity, of course, and believe that we don't take advantage of it or we carry ourselves as if we are better than them or that it's impossible for us to understand their plight because we are privileged, not realizing that we have our own issues out here in the States. And there are actually people in the States that are living worse off than those in Africa, which is something a lot of Africans could find hard to believe or understand if they don't have the knowledge or information. To me, the African dream looks like freedom, less corruption, the ability to govern our own people without outside interference, us being able to take advantage and profit from what we produce. Africans have a lot of talent, a lot of gifts, and if we have the opportunity for those things to get recognized worldwide consistently, that will be my dream for Africa. I really believe that one of the major issues that separates us is the ignorance of each other's journey. And once we have better understanding of that, there's no stopping us. The thing is that as far as I'm concerned, since we met you people 500 years ago, look at us. We've given everything. You are still taking. It's true. I mean, where would the whole Western world be without be without Africa, our cocoa, our timber, our gold, our diamonds, our platinum, our whatever. Everything you are is us. I am not saying it, it's a fact. And and in in return for all of this, what have we got? Nothing. Flag is is drenched with our blood because you see so many of our ancestors was killed because we have never accepted slavery we had to live on it but we've never wanted it so we know that this flag is drenched with our blood so what the young people are saying now give us a chance to be young men respected as a man as we know, this country was built on the black backs of black people across this country. And if we don't have it, you ain't going to have it either because we going to tear it up. That's what they're saying. And people ought to understand that. I, I don't see why they don't understand that. They know what they've done to us all across this country. They know what they've done to us. Oh yeah, we are influential. 